ahead. And there is a, one question came as, what do you think about the white body? So that's not relevant yes. to this, but it's a general question. Yeah. That's a very good question. It's a very good question. I think vibe coding is here and it's here to stay. Um, I think... I think that we're going to all have to be very thoughtful about how we use this tool because here's what's going to happen. And this is actually super important. I almost want to, uh, I'm going to stop share just to make this point to you guys. So you, you can focus on this point that I'm making because it's this important. I think the thing that we have to be very careful of is we don't, we need to understand what the AI is producing. And we need to own and master it so that we can be accountable and responsible for every line it produces and understand it deeply. Because the minute you're vibe coding and you don't understand the code, you're not needed. You're dispensable at that point. So if you want to be, if you want to be valuable, if you want to be valuable, you have to have mastery over what the AI is doing. Now, here's the pro way to go on that journey. The beautiful thing about AI is that it's a tool you can use to make yourself a master of everything it's doing. It just requires curiosity, right? This is what I wanted to do. I'm going to switch back to sharing because I got to show you this. This is actually what I was conceiving. There's like a couple, there's a couple videos uh, I want to make around this topic, but this is kind of what I was conceiving. I want to draw something that looks like this because this is the reality of the world. It's kind of an unfortunate truth. And I'll do it like this. This scale is competence, right? Competence. And I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this in my classes. Competence, whatever. So this is high and this is low. Competence, right? Now, before the GPTs, a class would have something like this, right? Let's just say this is the 95 percentile I'm at on average. And then you'd have your 5 percentile. That's, that's the best 5, right? 5 percentile competence. Now, this is, this is the status quo. All of these guys could get hired. Most of these guys could get hired, right? You know, you, you just hire people coming out of a good college. They passed. You can hire them. Now, here's what I'm seeing in real time. Since ChatGPT came out, and I can't even understate, it's like, it's almost a cliche, but I can't understate how drastic this is. It's almost like an atrophy of the ability to learn. I'm watching this happen. 90, a large swath, their competence have gone way down. The effect of AI, competence have gone way down. The effect of AI is some people, the competence has gone way up. It's one direction or another. And these students exist, right? Now, these folks that, this is today. The folks were graduating, honestly, because now we're at the, almost a four-year mark. So almost every student we have in the university started with the existence of ChatGPT, right? We're, we're getting to that point where everybody would have had ChatGPT in high school by the, time, by the time we're seeing them. And these folks are superstars. They know way more than the material would have taught them. They know it way more deeply. Now, what's the difference between these folks? What's the difference? The difference is curiosity. That's it curiosity and a propensity to learn for fun these folks go off script they go deep the ai the ai told them something they ask the ai everything else and then they and then they build that thing i'll give you a concrete example we teach a we teach a compiler class in this compiler class there's a project on lexical analysis there's there's some there's a project for that where students learn that regular expressions is how you do lexical analysis. Some of you guys will know what I mean by regular expressions because you've built them before. That's the realm of lexical analysis. There's a project for that. Before the GPT, you have to struggle through the project and then you'll forever understand that lexical analysis is a regular expression. Today, everybody aces that project because getting a GPT to write regular expressions for you is trivial. So you might know it at the moment that, oh yeah, regular expression, lexical analysis, let me solve the problem, blah, 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 gone, right? A, but because you didn't struggle, you don't remember it. So now people come, are, are graduating. They don't understand what lexical analysis is because they didn't, their brain didn't have to work to do it. So your brain having to work on a thing is how you gain knowledge. It's not about hearing it. That's why you can't learn to program by watching YouTube. You have to learn by coding. You cannot watch YouTube. You can't watch someone do karate. You can't, watch, you can't watch MMA or watch somebody do karate and say, 
I watched these moves a thousand times and I, I'm a karate expert. It doesn't work like that. You have to almost suffer in order to learn. And that applies to everything. That's why you have to do homeworks to really get it. I can watch a YouTube video of someone doing long division, but I can't remember how to do it unless I went through that effort. So this is the thing that's causing this effect. But the curiosity people, they, they, they thrive on. So we have people who build their own lexical generators. They just go way beyond. They use the GPT to then go build all kinds of crazy stuff. They're at least exerting this effort and they're learning a lot more. So what do I think about vibe coding? I think we have to be thoughtful about this. I think we're going to all be using it. You have to be, practically speaking, you have to be a master of every line produced. Otherwise, you're not valuable to whoever you're working for or with. You're just not useful because anybody can do that. But if you're a master, that means you're in control, right? And it's like, you know, it's like piloting a plane. You only want the pilots that can take over and, and take control. Right now, the planes can autopilot. Would you hire someone that just only knows how to push the autopilot button? Absolutely not. So you have to understand it. And so that's a journey for you. You're going to have to build. You're going to have to go deep. You're just going to have to be curious and spend time understanding everything the AI is doing. And then you're a superpower. Then you're one of these people and not one of these people. So that's what you're going to have to do, guys. Just trust me on this. I, I see this and it's terrifying when you see it from my perspective at the universities. These folks will easily get every job. And it's just this and the right mindset, right? So, so keep that in mind on that topic. Um, very good question. Oh, also, how does it relate to Jack Lang, right? So there's also a question of like, well, you know, if we're all vibe coding, aren't we just going to use the regular language? Just one of the beautiful things about Jack Lang that you'll come to see is that it'll take programs that are like 15,000 lines and turn them into a thousand line. It'll take a program that's 400 lines and turn it into 20 lines. And it turns out that LLMs do better if they're not dealing at lower levels of abstraction. Uh, if you try to have an LLM fix a bug in very complicated code, I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll give you uh, just a, a, cur a current example. Um, what we're finding in our expectation is that raising the level of abstractions makes LLMs perform better. And I'll give you a concrete example. To implement uh, a cloud program, you just have to do this in, in the language, right? So it's a higher level of abstraction. Here you see walkers and nodes, higher level of abstraction. And what's automated by the runtime is like fast API, keys, user auth, Python, MongoDB, user collection. Then you have all this other stuff, verify token, create token. Today, LLMs have to generate all of this code and get it right. If you have higher level languages, the LLMs can generate less code. We also have a roadmap to have this one language also target the browser. So it'll output JavaScript. And so you can, you can simplify the work of the LLM so you can have better coding LLMs, better vibe coding LLMs. And so I think that this actually will have some interesting implications to improve the quality of vibe coding with the language. And little secret, if you use any of the coding uh, assistants, they know how to write Jack already just by a function of it being on the internet. So, the, so everything that's written about Jack is teaching the, the AI already. So if you say, could you, could you write an awesome program in Jack using walkers and those and edges? It'll give you something that's surprisingly good, right? Um, so I think that the, we're very complementary to the trend towards vibe coding. But as a philosophy, just as a tip to you guys, I emphasize making sure you understand what's happening with what the vibe coders are producing. I think it's good to spend time on this topic because it's a very important topic and it's a topic that has implications on the culture and understanding how you fit into the broader culture. So I think it was good to spend some time on that.